In the vast realm of video games, non-playable characters or NPCs play an integral role in creating an immersive and dynamic virtual world. And today we will be going over the parallels of NPCs and people we may find in the real world. But before we do that, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who watches my videos. It means a great deal to me. Taking video game concepts and applying them to real life is one of the focuses of this channel and I couldn't be happier to share my lessons with you on a monthly basis. Anyways, yada yada yada, let's get back to the topic at hand. For those who are confused, NPCs are characters controlled by the game's artificial intelligence rather than by players themselves. They act as the backbone to the game's narrative, providing interactions, challenges, and depth into the gaming experience. Humans can also act like this at times. Think of your parents as the tutorial NPCs. They act as an intro to the world at large, giving you an understanding of the controls and the mechanics, albeit imperfectly, and they may lack an understanding of some mechanics, but that mostly has to do with the side effects of the tutorial NPCs that taught them. But don't worry, that'll get fixed in the next patch update. So what are some other similarities between NPCs and their real life counterparts? What are humans' diverse roles and the impact that they have on the players around them? It shouldn't be too difficult to draw parallels between our experience and the roles that non-playable characters in video games experience. A few examples come to mind. Quest givers, shopkeepers, and allies. Now let's break these down, shall we? NPCs frequently act as quest givers, offering players objectives and missions to undertake. They provide guidance, instructions, and valuable information. Just like NPCs offer quests and guidance to players, people often take on the role as quest givers and guides in real life. I already mentioned parents acting as guides through the early tutorial sections of life, guiding their children through the challenges of growing up. But they can also be mentors offering advice and support to their mentees, or colleagues helping each other navigate the complexities of the workplace. Whether it's social or strategic, people act as quest givers, offering direction, insight, and a sense of purpose to those around them. The thing is, it's difficult to seek out NPCs of this nature with good qualities. In my last video, I talked about Alliance versus Horde and different factions. But no matter which faction you choose, it's important to seek out high quality quest lines that offer the best skills, gear, or perks. This means you need to find high quality quest givers. And this is no easy task since this is primarily dependent on what kind of builds you want to do. Engineers are going to have to spec into different trees than teachers, and even retail workers are going to have a different skill set to deal with than those two. Speaking of which, within the virtual markets of video games, NPCs assume the role of shopkeepers and merchants. They offer players a variety of goods, equipment, and consumables, creating a dynamic economy within the gaming space. Interacting with these NPCs allows the player to buy and sell items upgrading their gear, and enhancing the gaming experience as a whole. In the same way that NPCs offer goods and services within video games, people in the real world take on the roles of shopkeepers and merchants. Whether it's selling goods online, offering services as a consult or a coach, or managing a brick and mortar store, people are constantly engaging with the exchange of goods and services. These interactions can be the foundation of dynamic economies and vibrant communities, much like the virtual markets found in video games. As someone who has worked in retail, I understand these interactions way too well, often feeling like I am on a scripted sequence in another player's RPG. Hi, and welcome to Megacorp. How can I help you today? Oh, I bought this t-shirt here and I would like to return it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Was there anything wrong with it? Oh, it just wasn't the right size. <laughs> That's kind of odd. Did you know that Megacorp has changing rooms? Why, yes, it's so nice and clean. Your employees take such good care of the store. Our official title is Lemmings, ma'am. And why didn't you use our pristine changing rooms? 
Oh, I just wanted to save some time and buy it right then. You know, <laughs> it just saves some time. And now you choose to waste my time by coming in here and bothering me? Well, you see, I... Ugh, did you have any other shopping to do or were you just coming to return these items? Well, well, no, I didn't have any shopping to do. I just wanted to give these items back and- Get out of my store. Oh, oh, I'm so, oh, I'm calling your manager later. Oh, I can't believe this though. This is so bogus. Oh, me frustrado is grande. I'm working on my Spanish, so I apologize. Disculpe, if you will. NPCs aren't just limited to friendly faces. They can also become formidable adversaries and steadfast allies. In combat-oriented games, NPCs can serve as challenging opponents or provide a strategic and skill-based encounter. Additionally, NPCs can join players as companions, offering assistance, unique abilities, and compelling story arcs. The relationships formed with these characters can evoke strong emotions and contribute to the player's sense of camaraderie and rivalry. Humans, just like NPCs, can also act as adversaries or allies depending on the circumstances. In some situations, people may be competing for resources or vying for power, much like the adversaries we encounter in video games. However, in other situations, people may form alliances, working collaboratively together towards a common goal and offering support and encouragement to one another. These dynamics can be multifaceted and very complex, just like the relationships between NPCs and players in video games. Recently, I've been playing through a game called Graveyard Keeper. The narrative of this game being that you're a man who has died and now has to build and manage a medieval graveyard while also facing ethical dilemmas and make questionable decisions. At least, that's what I've read from the Steam description. The main objective of the playable character is to get back to their wife, whom we assume is waiting for you. I bought this game off of a recommendation from a friend, and I'm actually having a good time wandering through and opening up different sections of the game. And this game was actually the conception of this video. You see, in Graveyard Keeper, it's very easy to get caught up in the NPC fetch quests. It's enticing. You go to the bartender and he needs you to grab some item, so you go and you search for that item. And you go to the blacksmith and he needs you to go get something else. But it doesn't matter, you're on a mission to go find the bartender's thing first and then you'll come back and you'll deal with the blacksmith. Hey, a body just dropped off at the morgue, are you gonna go take care of it? And all the while, you forget, what was my main objective? Oh yeah, I have to get back to my wife. So it's so interesting to me how you're the protagonist, the hero, but you've been relegated to the sidelines just like a common NPC. This is an interesting narrative switch, if I do say so myself. But something even more interesting happened to me. You see, I was playing this game over Discord with a few of my friends watching me in the first moments of the game. I was so excited to share these integral moments with them for the first time. And then this happened. I don't have wet stone. Oh, you gotta go into town and get one. Actually, it's more cost effective to just buy a, a new shovel. And spit on it. Uh, you haven't even delivered his letter yet? No. Oh, sell that burial certificate. Go south. Hold on! Pick <laughs> those berries. Did you have a little bit of Wario? <laughs> you, pick up that can. Not the flower, the berries. I'm doing this out of defiance. No, don't spam it. You'll waste all your energy. No, wrong way. Why? This is You got to go you got to go talk to the inquisitor. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, wrong way. That's the wrong way. <laughs> You're going the wrong way right now. I need iron to clear that path. <laughs> you got to do that firewood so you can make the uh the wedges. You don't have enough nails. 
really know how to min-max the fun out of the game. There is no fun in this game. <laughs> I got pushed to the side as my friend became the playable character, but this time as a human becoming an NPC. Now I need to point out that I was okay with this. I like moving the progress along from time to time. I just find it interesting how we can become NPCs in our own lives if we don't have good boundaries. Non-playable characters are multifaceted and they're an essential role to the realm of our video games. From driving the narrative to offering quests, providing guidance and fostering an immersive experience for the player. Non-playable characters are the backbone of our virtual worlds. And so are people. Just like NPCs engage in a variety of activities that make the virtual world feel more alive and responsive, people in the real world can also create a sense of vibrancy and engagement with their own actions. Whether it's participating in community events, volunteering for local causes, or simply engaging in conversations with each other, people have the power to contribute to the richness and texture of the world around them. Ultimately, it's through our interactions with people that we can shape our own stories and the world around us. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget what your main objective is, and I'll see you in the next one. Everything you know is a lie. Go make money on the internet. Get those life gain decks out of here. There's a new sheriff in town. That was pretty cool. Wow, what an adventure. Get him a body bag. <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but we're having a good time.